<clears throat> All right. I'm alive again. <laughs> One day I'm not going to be. Kind of funny thing, the odd way to start the mornings off, isn't it? Talking about being alive and dying. I finally did a... Uh, had a conversation with David Nino late yesterday. And uh, it's pretty funny. It's had a bullshit session about a bunch of stuff. But it ended with a uh, ended with a laugh attack. An honest laugh attack, which feels good. Isn't it funny how having a laugh attack feels so good? Isn't it funny? Hold on a sec. Whew. All right, it's got a little short interruption there from a close friend who just, uh, they just physically received the keys to their very first home, and they just walked into the house, and they got the phone call saying that they were pregnant. <laughs> What's up with that? How crazy is that? So, a little slice of good just went down in the world today. Now, where was I? Yeah, Nino and I had a good conversation, very recorded. I think he's going to post up his version first. He does a lot of editing and his cuts it out, scared of getting deleted. I don't cut anything out of mine, obviously. I'm almost tempted to cut out the laugh attack part and put it up first, just so you guys can have a good laugh, but I'm sure it'll get there eventually. Now, what's going on today? Who needs to be heard? Had some screenshots here sent. I think I'm gonna get get some of these read so I can get them out of my out of my phone. Now listen to this. This is titled Fort Lewis, Washington, 1987. While on ROTC training, after climbing a condensed weeded bushy hill with 50 pounds of rock sack, we made it a clear we made it to a clear dirt road and decided to take a break. Eight out of 11 of us saw the reddish brown, well-built, seven to eight foot tall Sasquatch slash Bigfoot standing and observing us 150 yards down the road. A cadet yelled Bigfoot and we all started walking towards it. I being senior yelled at the cadet to get back to the group and if he mentioned this, he would most likely be kicked out of the army. What a weird knee-jerk reaction that is. The Bigfoot heard me and marked me as a leader. We decided to sleep. We decided to sleep in this area. And that night, a terrible stench woke me up, but I was so tired I buried my face in my clothes to filter to filter it. The following morning I saw a large feather laid by my tent. One cadet saw it and picked it up. Retired army. Major Mike. There you go. There you go. Another comment laid down. Now here, here's another one. Now hold on a second. All right. Who's next? Here's another one. Screenshot comment. I, for one, know that Bigfoot is 100% real. I had an encounter with the one when I was 12. I was walking home from my friend's house after dinner about 20 minutes after sunset. I live in a coastal community next to, a large, next to large open spaces. As I got close to my home, my neighbor's fearless hunting dog, Blue Girl, wanted to follow me home. She was a super cool black lab and was very protective of us. As we rounded the corner to the road that led to my house, we heard footsteps crunching down through the trees. I thought it was possibly a deer or maybe some stoner friend of my brother's. Well, that changed at the sounds as the sounds came closer and Blue started sniffing the air and began to whine a bit. She was staring intensely at the trees and I was talking to her saying, good girl, good girl. I wasn't sure why she was starting to whimper, but what happened next, I will never forget. Out from the tree line steps a massive creature that in one step cleared the whole sidewalk and in one more was standing in the middle of the road. 
As it turns to look at me, Blue Girl was completely freaking out, twisting her head side to side with her eyes rolling back in her head. I grabbed her collar, but she was pulling backwards, and she knocked me down as she took off shrieking. It was as if she saw the devil himself. She ran away so fast, squealing, shrieking so loud, with her tail between her legs. I turned around and got up and just stood there in shock. The thing was nine feet tall, and with a few steps could have grabbed me and tore me in half, or thrown me fifty feet in the air. It just looked at me for ten seconds or so, and then with one more step, it was on the side of the road, and then it went down the hill through the trees. So yeah, I won't go anywhere unprepared, although I think there's far more about them than we realize. Yes, there is. And there you go, another member of the club. Here's another one. I'm a retired law enforcement officer from California. I grew up in West Virginia. I was in, the, I was in a tree stand back there in 1979 at 0500 Pitch Black watching a hillside trail when one scream slash roared at me. I couldn't see it, but it definitely could see me. Since elk and other animals can see in the infrared spectrum, I think they can as well. I now live in Oregon. Elk hunting gets spooky nowadays. Thanks for the info. Right on, man. Thanks for coming forward. Another one. I ran into three Sasquatches on the PCT trail, where it comes closest to Mount Shasta. One 10, 11 foot alpha and two smaller two smaller males. They were absolutely real. They harassed us all night, throwing rocks, shaking trees, and the roaring. Oh my God, the roaring was the worst. Still to this day, I wake up. I wake up in the night in full adrenaline, hearing the roaring in my dreams. It will blow your it will blow out your ears and rattle your rib cage at the same time. They are so effing big, you can feel every step they take. They make ground tremors when they run. I'm lucky I had a friend with me and we were both heavily armed. We shot over their heads, warning shots, when they would start getting too close. Our headlamps kept them back at first. We had super bright 18,650 lipo style headlamps. But our batteries ran out around 1 a.m. And that's when we built up our fire, which was a mistake. The fire got so hot we couldn't stay close and had to and for us to look away from it constantly. That's when the roaring started. Straight up, piss your pants roaring. At one point, the alpha was roaring, shaking trees, and overall making a huge amount of noise. My cousin and I stood, white knuckle gripping, our rifles pointed in its direction, waiting for it to charge. But to have another Sasquatch sneak up behind us and explode our fire with a huge boulder it threw. Wow, haven't heard that before. That's freaking terrifying, man. No person could have thrown a rock that big. I snapped around and let five shots go high. Since I couldn't see it, I didn't feel right aiming low. We used our guns to keep them back, and yes, they know what a gun is. We burned through probably 30 rounds in warning shots till the sun rose. The next morning, we left the area in a hurry. Later that day, we came across someone who was camped three to four miles away, and he could hear our shots and the roaring. Later that year, I moved to the only state to have zero Sasquatch encounters, Hawaii. Well, I hate to be the messenger, <laughs> but they've been seen there too, man. That's a shitty and terrifying experience. Can you imagine that? I think... For me, I don't know what I'd be doing. If I had that kind of fire, if I had enough rounds, I don't know, I'm picturing, I mean, I've been in the woods in the middle of nowhere around a fire a lot. So I'm picturing being assaulted that way. How would I react? I think if, if think if that a boulder that size hit the fire, I would feel absolutely, my life would be threatened at that point. And the rounds would have been going, I would have been trying to hit them. Whoever was could catapult a boulder that big at me in the dark and hit the fire. That could easily kill me. And I don't know, I'm, I'm just being honest. I'm trying to picture myself being there. Yeah, it's going to be game on. It's go time. I'm fighting for my life now and I'm going to put a hole in your head. Period.
but they're just misunderstood. Now they know what they're doing. Here's another one. I had my encounter at eight years old, and I'm from Louisiana. And you're right. Every single time you enter the woods, it is constantly on your mind. Nothing you can think of changes that. I'm 54 years old, and I had no clue what I saw until I was 14 and saw the legend of Boggy Creek for the first time. The only person I told was my mother, and I had no choice because I had problems sleeping for a good while. Thanks for sharing. I've checked out some of your videos before, but while watching it, I subscribed to your channel, so I look forward to seeing more. All right. There's another one. Totally relate to you, too. We all get it once you've seen this shit. We all get it. Here's another one. Two years ago, my three teenage kids and I... Oh, I got it. All right. Holy cow, I keep getting interrupted. Now, another friend of mine, charter guy, came over and stopped by unexpected. And he laughs at the topic. He doesn't look at me seriously at all if the topic ever comes up. It's kind of funny. Now, sorry. Where was I? Here's another one. Two years ago, my three teenage kids and I had an encounter while bow hunting in northern Arizona. That day, my life changed. And I have the exact same feelings you described. I grew up in the outdoors, and I struggle now, always looking over my shoulder, and my kids do as well. I'm sad they will never have the serenity of the mountains I grew up with until the day we saw this small group just 45 yards away. Everything you said, I feel exactly the same about. They are real and do exist. Thank you for sharing. Eric in Arizona. Eric, appreciate that comment, man. If you want to email me, you saw a group. I think everybody might be interested in hearing what went down that day, if you feel like it one day, man. If you're still here watching the channel. Yeah, it sucks in a way, right? It sucks in a way. But here, let me tap on this for one second. It sucks in a way knowing. But, you know, I was thinking about the other day. How many people do I know of who have been physically attacked in their homes by something huge from the forest? Nobody. You know what I mean? How many people do we know that have been physically harmed, uprooted out of their home or out of their vehicle? I don't know anybody yet, myself. I mean, there's a, there has been some crazy ass shit has gone down in the States. We know that in various areas. I don't know what's responsible for those deaths. But for the most part, especially in British Columbia, let's face it, British Columbia is absolutely overran with experiences from people from all wakes, different wakes of life, right? And nobody has any firsthand experiences of, say, their kid being ripped out of their arms or their husband got his head pulled off or, you know what I mean? We're not hearing it. We're hearing a lot of people being intimidated and have the, scare sh the shit scared out of them, but that's about it, right? But it's still, it's a tough thing to deal with. It's a tough thing to wrap your noodle around when when it's when you get fed that sandwich you didn't ask for. Really interesting and much appreciated, Steve. I observed a Sasquatch around 30 to 35 years ago in the Cascade Mountains near Mount Bachelor in Central Oregon. I was on a winter survival class trip and I had just broken my ski on a snow-covered log. I looked up about 500 yards above me and he was silhouetted on the skyline striding slowly along. I could tell he's about eight feet tall, as his head was same height as lower branches of the big Douglas fir trees. I couldn't make the climb to check him out due to broken, due to broken ski, but there was no doubt what I saw. Keep up the stories. Keep the stories coming. BC rocks. There you go. Denny, your comment's been shared. And another, and another, and another. Now look at this. I had this email to me. Just the photo. Don't know nothing about it. It's in rock. Look at this. Anybody know about that? Anything about that? Because I don't. It's crazy though, right? There's a lot of real crazy shit. Evidence of some people being alive in rock around the globe. But not a, not a large amount of people uh, 
pay much attention to, all right? This is titled, no title. This is a comment screenshot another one sent in. I've seen a Bigfoot. Also, I have been baptized. Feel free to use my story. My name is Debbie. I was in Wellston, Michigan. It was near Dublin about 12 years ago. I was walking with a friend on a trail looking for morel mushrooms. There was a big pile of crap the size of six-pack tall cans left in the middle of the trail. I think we just read this, didn't we? The Bigfoot was looking over the bushes about 25 feet. Had a human-looking face. I feel it was a juvenile. Long black hair, charcoal color face. Six to seven feet tall. He was looking over the bushes at us. We were talking to each other when we made eye to eye contact. Then we turned around walking back down the trail. The Bigfoot was looking over the bushes at us. And then on the side of the bushes. Did this several times. We laughed when we passed the crap. Never told anyone about it. Feel free to feel, felt it needed to be free. Since the last year, I've been listening to all the stories reminded me of seeing it. Told a few friends, sending blessings and prayers for all those in need. Godspeed, healing, Sarah. I think we read that. I'm just ripping through my inbox here to get rid of... I've got so much stuff on my phone, you guys. I don't want to miss anybody. And if I... Excuse me, do a one quick one to two minute repeat. Oh, well, no harm done. Excuse me. No, holy cow, there's a whole bunch more. I think. I love your channel. I've been a subscriber for a long time. I'm a retired deputy sheriff for a rural county. And have had many encounters with these things. My first encounter... I was five years old and I was very trauma and it and was very traumatizing to say the least. Most of my encounters were with something I cannot comprehend. Huge wolf-like creatures. My last encounter with one of these things was only a few months ago, where which it tried to attack my dogs, three large pit bulls, and break into my home. I had to actually defend myself with heavy gunfire. Like you said, once you've seen these creatures, you can't unsee them. It changes your whole perception of life. I used to love to hunt and fish, and I spent a lot of time in the woods. I'm 55 years old, and when it gets dark, I stay in my home until the sun comes up. Hell, still leery... Typo. We'll say you said I'm still leery of the woods during the daylight hours. I try and share my experiences with friends and family, and they thought I was ready for the loony bin. So I kept it all in for the longest time. I have since started sharing some of my experiences, and I do not care who believes me or not, because now I have neighbors that have had experiences when these things with these things, and they, until recently, kept it to themselves. These are people that I've alone known for 20 years or more. Just recently, they came forward to me to talk about it. Soon, I hope to email you about some of my experiences because I now feel that I should share them whether I, I am believed or not. If no one believes me, that's their problem. Once they have their own experience, it will feel a lot different. I can assure you of that because it has changed my life. Thanks, God bless. Send away me. I don't know if you have sent or not, but please do. Keep sending it. We need, especially people that are scared to speak out loud for a while, we need you to, to crack it open. All right? We need you to crack it open. Here's another one. You asked, who is that one person you trust most, etc.? Well, my mother told me a story when she was a little girl and what she and her siblings saw. They never spoke about it after that day. But it's obvious. She saw Bigfoot. So, yeah, I believe they exist. If you can't believe those who you trust the most, who can you believe in life, right? Not sure how I landed on your channel, but I'm glad I did. I've tried to tell others what I've seen as well, and like you said, they don't want to believe it. In 1978, I, along with four others, were on a four-day float trip on the Buffalo River in the Ozarks of Arkansas. 
On the second day, we had to pull out early because of downpour and lightning storm. We set up camp about 50 to 60 back from the river on a higher bank. Being on of the end older teens, I think he meant being one of the one of the older teens, I was assigned to collecting firewood. As I went along the riverbank, I kept feeling like something or someone was watching me. As I was about to back about as I was about back to camp, one of the older men came over to me and was looking very intently at the bluff edge on the other side of the river. Then the man that was in charge of the group came over also. There on the opposite side, about 50, 60 yards across, squatted down between a large boulder and a tree was a very large creature. So they started hollering at it and throwing rocks the size of softballs towards it. Our rocks were landing a good 20 to 30 feet short. After about five minutes of us pestering it, it stood up upright and it was huge. Well, it decided to return a rock toward us. The rock was about the size of a basketball and weighed an easy 25 pounds. It landed about three feet from our boats that we managed to make shelter with. It let out, it let out a very loud huff and a bone chilling whoop. Then turned, took three giant leaps up the hill and was gone. Yes, none of us slept that night. No doubt. Yeah, I have a feeling that if anybody started a rock fight with these beings, you're probably gonna lose. Here's a comment that sounds like it might be a little odd. Lizard man story. In reference to the lizard man email on another YouTube channel that has been similar format as Steve's. Someone's story consisted of walking in the woods on a trail. The individual comes around a bend in the trail and sees a Bigfoot laying across the trail, apparently injured or deceased simultaneously sees another much bigger Bigfoot engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat with what they describe as a lizard slash T-Rex looking man. What the hell? The Bigfoot was getting the upper hand and suddenly a shimmering hazing area begins opening behind the lizard man and the Bigfoot pushes the creature into this portal and it closes. Like I said, this story I heard on another channel and hearing the story today on Steve's channel instantly brought it to mind. Makes one really wonder about things. Unbelievable, right guys? Take from what you will and leave the rest. Yeah, it sounds a little crazy. But at this stage of the game, who knows? Who knows, right? So much crazy ass shit. Um, now yeah, where am I? Okay, I got a screenshot here. This is unrelated, but it's uh, interesting. Listen to this. I don't even know where this came from. The Arctic Ocean is warming up. Icebergs are growing scarcer. And in some places, the seals are finding the water too hot. According to a report to the Commerce Department yesterday from U.S. Consulate at Bergen, Norway. I've been to Bergen, Norway. Reports from fishermen, seal hunters, and explorers all point to a radical change in climate conditions and hitherto unheard of temperatures in the Arctic zone. Exploration ex expeditions report that scarcely any ice has been met as far north as 81 degrees 29 minutes. Soundings to a depth of 3,100 meters show the Gulf Stream still very warm. Great masses of ice have been replaced by moraines of earth and stones. And the report continued, while at many points well-known glaciers have entirely disappeared. Very few seals and no whitefish are found in the eastern Arctic, while vast shoals of herring and smelts, which have never before ventured so far north, are being encountered in the old seal fishing grounds. Within a few years, it's predicted that due to the ice melt, the sea will rise and make most coast cities uninhabitable. In just a few years. Then there's a note at the bottom. I must apologize, and I neglected to mention 
This report was from November 2nd, 1922, as reported and published in the Washington Post 96 years ago. This must have been caused by the Model T Ford's emissions or possibly from horse and cattle flatulence. <laughs> there you go. Take for what you will really leave it. But don't knee jerk and blow a gasket. All right, there we go. Those are cleared up and deleted out of my inbox. Now let's get some, some more voices shared. This is titled, Not Sure What It Was. Sir, I live in Redmond, Washington. I took my kids up on the Snoqualmie Pass last week to go play in the snow. We're one of two families in the sledding area. When we were at where we're at being, but was a Monday. Sorry, let me read that smoother. Sorry. We were one of two families in the sledding area where we were at being, but was a Monday. It was snowing pretty hard at one point while my son and I were playing and then it got really quiet. The feeling that something was watching us came over me. I turned around and looked in the trees behind us and caught a flash of black, but it wasn't a distinct shape. It stopped in front of one of the trees and seemed to be like a shadow clinging to the side of the tree. Everywhere else at the tree, everywhere else by that tree, there was plenty of light, but there was an unearthly black on the side of this tree. I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me. Right after I saw the shape, all the snow came falling out of one of the trees close by. It like something had hit the tree or had shaken it. My son was unaware of what was going on. And I told him we needed to go to the car to warm up for a minute. I wasn't looking for anything. I was concentrating on sledding and having a good time with my son when this happened. Bigfoot was the furthest thing from my mind. Usually is when shit goes down, man. Usually is. The shadow's a pattern, right? The shadow description is a strong pattern. Thanks for telling that in, man. Appreciate you. Here's another this is titled Siren Sounds in the Night. Steve, I've watched most of all your videos and I'm ready to share my experience. Right on, man. September 2017. I live in the Panhandle of West Virginia. One night in September 2017, about 1 a.m., I went out on the deck with my dog Bella to have a smoke and enjoy the evening before retiring. The two dogs up the road, maybe 175 to 200 yards, were barking. Not unusual. We were out there for a minute or two, and Bella just took off on a full run through the yard over the south fence by the tree line, growling, running low to the ground. Usually, if she hears a critter in the woods, she'll bark, then run out to the trees in a high profile, tail straight up and head up, barking. I heard something big in the brush as she got close to the fence line. I thought, oh shit, here we go. I'm thinking it's a bear. So I ran in the house, put on my boots, grabbed a flashlight and the 45 and ran out there. She was about halfway into the trees at the fence growling. I shined the light around expecting to see something but saw nothing. That's when it started. I heard a ah hoo starting up from a really low pitch in the woods just on the other side of the empty house next door, maybe 75 to 100 yards away. At first it sounded like something imitating a siren winding up, but I thought, this guy must be huge. He was so vivid. I could see a jaw moving in my mind's eye. Bella ran past me along the fence out towards the front, again growling, not barking. I ran after her. At first it almost sounded like a large human imitating a wolf howling or a siren winding up, but it was loud and too long-winded. It went from very low to very high in pitch. Being a musician, I would estimate the range of pitch was five octaves plus. Certainly more than any human or animal we have around here. But the harmonic content was rich. Maybe more overtones than you would hear from a person or a mechanical siren. When the sound reached the highest note and started to come down in pitch, at least two more started in tandem from low to high. These sounded slightly smaller in size than the first, 
By the time I got to where the dog was, by the front fence, the sound was so loud, I couldn't have heard someone talking loud right next to me. It was overpowering. God, that's so crazy. The descriptions of these sounds are, are something else. I don't want to hear it <laughs> myself. I do, but I don't. Long, long siren, like howling sounds. The sounds oscillated from very low frequency to very high frequency, well outside the normal human range. The three sounds overlapped, not in unison. One would go up while another, another would go down. It penetrated my whole body. I stood there just stunned. I've never heard anything like it in my life. It was absolutely deafening. I'd liken it to being a half a block away from three fire trucks, all with sirens blaring. However, it was not mechanical in nature. It was completely organic. I just stood there in awe, transfixed. It lasted about a minute or two. I'm not completely sure of the time. Then, absolute silence. No dogs barking, no birds, nothing but absolute penetrating silence. No sounds in the air for miles. I stood there and shone the light over the fence for a while, but didn't see anything. Excuse me. Then I looked for Bella and she was gone. I walked around the yard, but I couldn't find her. I finally found her inside my office, under the desk, cowering, looking totally freaked out. I tried to get her to come out on the deck with me, but she wouldn't budge. I went back out on the deck for a while, but that was all there was. I was so shaken, I took out I took out the dog door and locked the back door that night. It's the first time I've done that for something other than extreme weather since it went in. The howling was so loud and long-winded that it would have to have come from something massive in size. It could not have been wolves, coyote, or feral dogs. My mind's eye kept visualizing something much, much larger. I could actually physically feel the howling in addition to hearing it. It penetrated every fiber of my body. I was kind of in shock. It wasn't until the next day that I came to my senses and thought, what the hell was that? I'll add there is a volunteer firehouse about two miles up the road in the opposite direction. They have a mechanical siren that they set off to call the boys in an emergency. These sounds I heard went lower and higher than the firehouse siren. Perhaps these things, whatever they are, were imitating the siren that they, that they must have heard from a time to time. Now every time I hear the fire siren start up, it brings it all back, although it is pale in comparison to the pitch and volume I heard that night. I never saw anything, and I'm sure, and I'm not sure I ever want to. This is not the only strange incident I've experienced here at my home in the country. I've made some notes of other incidences, and we'll share them as well at a later date. Thank you so much for all you do concerning these matters. I don't feel alone anymore. Feel free to use my name, Daniel Zarconi. Share it, man. Appreciate you coming forward. Pretty good description, especially coming from a, a musician who's absolutely familiar with sounds. And making sounds. Yeah. Usually it's a woman screaming high pitch going to a low grumble growl sound as well as another one starting high ending low is another pattern but that's a different sound I think than what this sound is you're describing which many others have heard right all right this one's kind of long I'm going in and then I'm gonna get ripping the lights Sasquatch and a friend's dog man sighting Hi, Steve. Hope you're doing well. That's some weird things that have happened to me in the woods. Please feel free to share all these stories if you'd like. And my name as well. All right, here we go. The lights. I want to say this happened in the winter 05 or 06 at my parents' house. One night I woke up out of a dead sleep around 4 a.m. Normally I just roll over, go back to sleep, or get up and go to the bathroom, etc. But on this night, something in my head told me to get up go look out the window. I walked over to the window, opened the blinds, and about at about 50 to 60 yards into the woods, I see two balls of yellowish white light traveling next to 
each other coming straight towards the house. They were a little larger than softballs, if I had to guess. My heart sank. They were slowly floating closer and closer towards the house at about four feet off the ground. The creepy part is, as I stared at them, it was like they knew they had been caught. The lights stopped dead in their tracks and quickly dimmed like someone was using a dimmer switch for a light bulb. These were definitely not flashlights or car headlights because they were, there were no rays of light touching anywhere else in the woods. These lights were self-illuminated. Naturally, at first, I thought I was seeing two people walking through the woods to come break into the house or something like that. There have been break-ins in our neighborhood in the past, so this is why I thought this. I ran and woke up my parents and told them that I think two people are coming through the woods to break into the house. We turned on the porch light, went outside, and my dad yelled for whoever was out there to come out. Or something along those lines. We heard absolutely nothing. No footsteps, no animals crunching the leaves, no cars driving by, nothing. It wasn't until years later I really started to think about how strange this truly was. Why did I wake up out of a dead sleep and feel the need to go look out the window? How did the light seem to know that I was looking at them and stop on their tracks? It was pitch black in the woods that night, so how could they have seen me in my window? I feel like whatever these things are, that they were just passing through. I've never had any strange or creepy happen in these woods other than the lights. This, other than these lights this one time. I'm very comfortable in the woods around here and would regularly walk home from my friends at 2 or 3 a.m. after drinking and stuff like that. And I've never seen anything strange on this property since. I think I've seen the lights on a few other occasions after I moved out years later. I moved into my friend's house in the suburbs about 10 miles away. We lived in a normal, quiet neighborhood that had a school at the top of the street. There were some woods nearby. But these sightings, if I can call them that, happened at the house. These sightings were just quick glimpses, and I always wondered to myself, did I really see what I thought I just saw? One night I came outside to let my dog out. As he does his business, I normally look up at the stars and just kind of look around. On this particular night, I looked up and it looked like I saw a bluish white orb hiding behind a tree in my neighbor's yard about 20 feet off the ground. And I say this because when I saw it, I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me. And when I went to get a better look, I feel like I saw it behind another tree, like it was trying to avoid me. This thing was moving very fast because I only got a very quick glimpse of it. That's why I'm still wondering if my eyes were playing tricks on me. It went out of sight so fast. Another time a few years ago, same house, and I was letting my dog out a game. The only difference was this one happened in the morning while the sun was up. I was about to leave for work, so I let my dog out to go to the bathroom again. I was looking around again, and this time on the opposite side of the house, it looked like I saw a yellowish white ball of light duck behind a tree again. It was like I was turning my it was like I was turning my head, and it went, oh crap, he's gonna see me. Like he was trying to hide. So that one was a real quick glimpse. And I didn't see anything when I went to go check. So I'm not really sure what to make of these lights. A few weeks ago, I was having a fire outside late at night all by myself. It was after midnight, and off in the distance I saw a dark yellow orb type light fade in and out very quickly, about 50 yards away. I brushed off as it being a neighbor's Christmas lights or porch lights turning on, but I thought to myself, there's no way I can see anyone's house from where I was standing. The closest house is through the woods and up and over a small hill, so no chance it was a house. I thought maybe it was eye shine from a deer. As quickly as I thought that, the same dark yellow light appeared again out of the corner of my eye to my right like it was just traveling through the woods, like it had some place to be. I didn't feel threatened, but I didn't want anything to do with it. So I just went back to my fire and left it alone. Sasquatch, maybe. In my free time, I go hiking any chance I get, so I'm always in the woods. A few years ago, I wanted to see if there was anything to this whole Bigfoot Sasquatch stuff. So I started hiking in areas that have had reports so I could see for myself. To make a long story short, 
the more time I would spend at these places, the more I would have strange occurrences. I've heard many tree knocks, seen many tree structures, or what I believe to be structures. I've heard a whoop, had creepy feelings of being watched, etc. At this one particular area that I hike, I've had numerous strange things happen there, and the place gives off this very negative vibe. I've run into some sketchy people there, and I just feel off about being there the most times. Being there most times. Anyways, one day I was hiking there, and there's this half a mile stretch of trail that just makes me feel uneasy a lot of times. I always have my head on a swivel, and I'm always very alert because you never know who or what might run into you at this place. It's also a great way to see wildlife. So I get to one spot on the trail and I'm getting that creepy feeling like I'm being watched. I feel like I'm just working myself up and it's probably nothing. To my left there's a little, I guess I'll call it a trailer gully that goes up to the top of a ridge that's covered in bushes on both sides. But at the very bottom, closest to me, there's a little opening. I always look there to see if I can see deer or anything like that. And on this particular day, I notice the opening looks dark. And I'm assuming it's because it's morning and it's just a shady spot. But I keep hearing this voice in my head saying, Stop looking at me. Or, do not keep looking over here. My heart's pounding and I froze. I turned my back to where the shady spot was and I heard something run off quickly up the hill right where I was looking. I have no idea what it was. And at the time, I thought it was just a deer. But if it was a deer, why did it have those? Why did I have those thoughts? Why was it so creeped out? I've more recently heard that I can only describe as heavy stomping in that almost exact area. And I've heard a tree knock that I felt like I was, that I felt like was a warning for me not to come through the area. It's an incredibly strange area. I heard someone laughing right behind me once, and no one was there. I was watching a ghost show, and it talked about this exact area. Someone allegedly found some book in a shack back there, and then got possessed by a demon. I don't know if that's true, but the place is, is definitely creepy. Another time there, I got insanely lost there. I was just walking in circles, and all I can remember is that I was on a trail I've never been on before, and I've never been able to find the trail since this one day. I don't remember much, but I eventually heard a train and found my way out by walking down the tracks. The strange part about this is that to get to the trail that I was on that led me to the train tracks, I would have either had to walk through thick woods or walk out to a main road, cross it, and cut through someone's private property. I don't remember leaving, ever leaving the trail. I have no idea how I got where I was. Not sure if I was disoriented or if I had missing time or something. That's pretty creepy. Dogman. I almost forgot my friend has never heard of Dogman, and she told me a story. She was visiting a college in southern Maryland, and there's a spot on the road that people apparently see the ghost of an old Civil War soldier. Right at this exact spot, she told me that a giant black dog ran out in front of her car and crossed the road. She said it looked like a German shepherd, and its back stood five feet off the ground while on all fours. It was a quick glimpse, but she was shocked and didn't know what to make of it. Thanks for taking the time to read this. Just want to add to the collection of weird stories and let people know they're not alone and not to feel ashamed for what they've seen. Kevin King, Maryland. Kevin, appreciate your honesty, man. Being brave and coming forward. Big time. That's a lot of crazy shit. The light thing, haven't seen it. Well, I saw a weird light in the forest, what, last summer? And then that branch got snapped, and I saw that big cedar tree branches raised just on the other side of the lake from me. But that's about it. Oh, no, wait a minute. I saw that I videotaped those lights up in the mountains, too. Remember that? But I guess what I'm meaning is I haven't seen a, a glowing light, like, right there between me and that tree. Or in those trees. I don't think. I just saw that one light wasn't moving. I thought it was a reflection off of a broken glass. Maybe. I don't know. I guess I could probably go back there and investigate and take a look. Not that I really give too much of a shit, but...
But then I was eating my lunch in the tailgate of the truck at the edge of the lake, and then that huge, huge branch got popped, snapped in the thick shit right beside me. And just before that snap, I saw branches raise up. They looked like been, they were being held down across the lake from me, about maybe 150 from me. But anyway. Hmm. Oh my God. Chopped lips. I can't stop licking them. And I know it's bad. <laughs> and the wind and the rain and the snow. We were fishing a couple days ago. But anyway, there you go. I got to get going. I, I am going in to help share Sarah with the shop to get all the food for the kids today. So I got to get ripping. And then I might come back and do some more on here later on today, possibly, I hope. And I might get that uh, video. I don't know when the video of Nino and I will be up, but I'll let him throw his down first. He does. He edits his. He, we both record it at the same time. And he edits edits his because he's scared to be in, uh, booted off YouTube. And I'll let him have out his. And then, uh, but I share the whole thing here. I don't give a shit. It is going to be pretty funny at the end. Real funny. And everybody needs a laugh, right? So there you go. Share my story, howtohunt.com. Get it to me. Get it to me. Um, the hardcover book. A bunch of people are asking me what's up with the hardcover version of my hunting book that was published. And uh, I will do it eventually. And believe me, there's no money in, do in making books. This is a good thing. It's just a good thing for me to do to contribute to my hunting community. And I remember when I was growing up, and this is a little off topic, but some of you are interested. Uh, hunting black-tailed deer. They're very little-known deer. They're only in the state of California, Oregon, Washington, Alaska, and BC. That's it. And there's never ever any cool shit for that topic when I was growing up hunting. So um, that'll be a good item to leave behind well, after I'm dead. I was publishing the book of my adventures and successes and failures. <laughs> Becoming a self-taught big game hunter and guide is in that book. So I think I will do, um, like I actually went to a printer yesterday here in town and told them, I go, is there any way you can print this book for me cheaper? And I told him that Amazon's basically got a grip on it. He goes, yeah, it's pretty hard to compete with Amazon. I go, really? He goes, yeah. Oh, shit. I owed up the hardcover. Could you do the hardcover book? And he goes, no, I'd have to suss that out with somebody else too. I'm like, okay, whatever. So I tried yesterday to find somebody to do the hardcover book. I'll get around to doing it pretty quick, but I think I have to unpublish and then republish the book again to make the choices of the type of pages, the gloss, the color, etc. And then make that available. It'll be more of just like a, for the, the hunt enthusiast, it should be a great book to have in your collection with all the color photographs in it. So there you go. I think, I think in the end, even off the paperback, I think you make like three bucks a book or some stupid thing. There's, there's nothing there. But it's a good thing to do. So I did it. So I'll put the link. I'll put the link for that book again in the description below in case you missed it. Sarah's store is there. And uh, on and on and on. <laughs> All right. I'm babbling. I got to go. Usually when I got shit I got to do, my brain starts swerving and I'm not smooth on here. So I got to go. Share my story at howtohunt.com. Get that honest information out. All right. Later.
Thank <laughs> you.